whatever he says. <laughs> Take notes, whatever he says. I feel like that boy that went to town with his dad years ago. And his dad said, I got things to do, but I want you to stay here by the gate, and I'll come back and get you. And his father got caught up in the business, forgot his boy. Got back home. His wife said, where's, where's our son? He said, I forgot him, but he'll be right exactly where I left him at that gate. Sure enough, when the dad went back, there was his boy standing there at the gate. Fifty years ago, Jesus Christ made himself real to me. And I stood at the cross. And for 50 years, I've tried to stay there. And by his grace and mercy, he's kept me at the foot of the cross, knowing that if you lift Jesus up, he will draw all men, all women unto him. And he's the answer. I knew an alcoholic that came to church, accepted Christ, got freed, liberated. One of his old buddies said, do you believe Jesus turned water into wine? He said, of course I do, because he turned whiskey into furniture. A broken-hearted wife into a whole and happy wife. He turned fearful children into faith-filled children, and he turned me into a temple of the Holy Ghost, Amen. the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead now dwells in my mortal body. Yes, sir. Amen. I wanted to lift him up before I had some things to say here to this pastor. I, is Lori here also? Okay, well, I'll act like she is. Pastor Jerry and Lori, thank you for the invitation to be with you in the celebration of your 20 year. And of course, Lori, we respect and are inspired by her courageous battle for her health. And we're believing God to give her progress and better and better health. We don't deny trouble, we defy it Amen. in the name of Jesus. Pastor Jerry, it may sound a bit corny, but it's true. If a star fell every time we thought of you, the sky would be starless. You're always on our minds, always in our hearts, always in our prayers. You've made the burden of our journey lighter by your wisdom of friendship and your application of those wonderful principles. By your unfailing care for us spiritually, emotionally, and physically, we love you. Pastor Joseph, Pastor David, and that will be Pastor David with Tony, Pastor Joseph with Skyler, Brother Josiah with Natalia. Pastor Jerry has always spoken of you with gratitude for your humble, supportive, sacrificial, Christ-like service to him and to this great church. And may God bless you richly during this special time of celebration, refreshing, reviving, talking to you. He's a God of revelation, isn't he? He shows us step by step. David Huff, I know he's gone, so I won't say anything to him. Is he here? Well, I'll say to this great church, thank you for holding back the darkness, for making sure there's a hiding place for those seeking shelter in the name of Jesus. Jesus taught us to pray, deliver us from the evil one. And now this church house in this city has been holding back the darkness, has been offering a place 
where a life can be saved, a marriage can be restored, health can be regained, purpose can be given, power of the Holy Ghost can come into our lives, and we find out there's more inside of us than we ever dreamed of. God caused a deep sleep to come upon Adam. It was in a time of communication and intimacy and friendship. Adam walked with God. God caused a deep sleep to come upon him, and out of his side, he took a beautiful bride. He took a helpmeet. He took somebody that could help him change the world. 4,000 years ago, 4,000 years after that, Jesus took a bride out of his side and said, I need some help. This local church has said, we want to help. Work with us. Work with us. We'll cooperate with you. We'll trust you. We'll obey you. And he promised us that he'd do great things through us. And you saw on the video, he's done exceeding, abundantly, above all you can ask or think. This church makes a difference. Several years ago, I participated in a memorial service for a woman who loved the local church, gave generously of her time, her talent, and her treasure for the greater part of her 100 years. She cleaned, she painted, she gathered volunteers for necessary projects, taught Bible classes, worked in church office, stayed true to the church in lean times and good times. Difficult times, she stayed. She cooked for youth camps and, and on and on and on. And as I thought about her, I shared a story, a tribute to her memory, and I share it with you because I'm going to make it a tribute, if you will let me, to you this great church in this city. Tradition says that in the primitive days before electricity or gas-related conveniences, if someone wanted to have light for illumination in the home for candles or what have you, or if they wanted warmth or a cook stove, there was no switch to flip on or button to push. Instead, in the central courtyard of most villages, there was a fire that was kept burning. If people needed light, if people needed warmth, if people needed security, or people needed anything that a fire could produce, they would go out to the central fire that was kept burning. And from that central fire, they would take a brand of fire for their purposes back to their dwelling. The central fire was considered so critical, so vital to the life of the village that a fire keeper, that's what this church is, a keeper of the fire for people who need light because they're in darkness. For people who need warmth, who've gotten cold in their heart towards God and towards others, they want again to know the joy of deep love, God love. Now, the keeper of the fire was hired to watch over the fire. If for any reason the fire keeper allowed the fire to go out, if a strong wind rose up and blew it out or rain came and drenched it or the keeper of the fire went to sleep and through neglect let the fire go out, then it cost the keeper of the fire their life. It was a serious responsibility. And my friend had taken her responsibility as you have taken the responsibility for this church. She took the responsibility of the success of the local church with that quality of seriousness. She left a powerful testimony of inspiration, influence, illumination, instruction. Lord Jesus, help us continue training our part, doing our part to be keepers of the fire. Yes. The place of revelation, the place where like the man born blind, he was uh, around a Jesus meeting. He was around a church meeting because Jesus had gathered apostles around him, much like this place today. I already have felt the fire of God's presence here. I already have felt the inspiration through what I've seen on the video, through fellowshipping with you. I already want to do better for Christ just for being here. You see, this is not 
any old building. Uh, this is a bush out in the Sinai Peninsula where the fire of God comes down on it. And from that fire, if people are interested, God will speak a word of power and change. He'll say, I need your help because I know 40 years ago you tried to deliver the Hebrew people. Well, I'm as angry about the vulnerability and the abuse of a Pharaoh, and I'm going to send you now, now that you're 80 years old, because now you know it's not by might. Now you know it's not by power. Now you know it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. And out of that fiery bush, you see, God's good at taking a nobody and turning him into a somebody. And Moses is 80 years old and feels like he's wore out. But when you believe in Jesus Christ, there's more in you than you ever dreamed of. He just wants you from the creation to the crib in Bethlehem to the vulgar, cruel, brutal cross of Roman crucifixion, to the resurrection celebration, to the second coming of Jesus Christ, he has only wanted to be with us. He has only wanted us to love him. He has only wanted us to spend time with him so he could reveal our next step. So he could reveal his will, his ways, his wishes, his wants. This local church may look like any common building, but it's not because there's a fire on it. Yeah. And there is, a, since there's a fire on it, when your pastor gets up to preach, or the worship ministry ministers, or you fellowship together, since there's a fire on it, then there's a word of change and authority in it, like Moses found out. And because you come here, it reminds me of that man born blind. When he went to a Jesus meeting, he went to a church meeting, and uh, Jesus saw him, and they asked the question, who sinned? We're not going to get into that. But if we ask that man, what happened when you were at that church in Crosby? What happened when you were at the 20th anniversary you seem different. What happened? Well, this blind man said, uh, I was standing there, and all of a sudden, I, I felt the presence, a powerful presence. And they said, it's Jesus. And then I, I heard wonderful words. Uh, uh, it was a bit strange, a bit odd. I wasn't used to it. But I felt his touch, and he had spit on the ground and gathered dust. Listen, faith is not reasonable. It's not something that's logical. It's something that we believe. God said it. I believe it. If I can't explain it, I don't care. I admire him. Yes. I, I, if I understood God, I don't have a God. I believe in a God. And the just shall live by faith, not by reason or understanding alone. And he said, I felt his touch. And he spoke to me, go wash. And when those words, please pay attention to this, and young people, when you hear preaching, the words come with power. What power? They give you the desire to obey him. It's like batteries included. And he said, when he spoke to me, and he said, go wash, I didn't think it was crazy. I didn't think it was wild. I just thought, I'm going to obey him. I'm going to do what he's telling me to do. And not only that, it, that voice came inside of me, and I believed it could happen. I absolutely believed if I went and washed my face and got this dirt off of my eyes, that I would have illumination, that I would see things I've never seen before, yeah. that I would know things I've never known before. From birth, there are things I haven't known. I'm trying to tell you this over and over the few days that I'm here, that there's so much more in you, and the Lord Jesus wants to spend more time with you and with me because he's got things that are going to unfold in our lives. Greater things, higher things, more faith, more grace, more power, more spiritual strength. He said, and so I went obediently energized by that voice. Haven't you come to a church service one way and left another way? 
Hadn't you been upset about something and uh, couldn't, get, uh, couldn't get over it? But when the word was preached or someone had uh, a good word of fellowship to you, all of a sudden you felt like, I can make it. I can do this. And you got back in the car singing a tune from the worship service. Come on, can I get an amen on that? That's what this place is. Let's go. Go another 20 years. Go another 50 years. He'll pass the torch to some other man. Hallelujah. But it's not any old bush. It's the bush that God put his fire on. Jesus loves the church. And that man born blind, he came back and he said, once I was blind. That's all I know. I don't care if you know all the doctrines. Certainly don't want you to know church rules and regulations. But uh, if, if all I know, the only thing I know is that once I was blind, once there were things I couldn't see. I couldn't see how to love my kids. I couldn't see how to get free from drugs. I couldn't see how to get away from this alcohol. I, I went to the far country, got in the pig pen. I was thinking things I never thought I'd think. I was saying things I never thought I would say. And I was doing things I never thought I would do. But uh, once I was blind. Anybody witness with that? Have I got a house full of perfect people? Isn't he a great savior? Yeah. I'm going to take a look at a verse now. It'll be a verse I use quite often, John chapter 1, verse 16, in the Amplified Version. This is about our Savior. This is about being once blind, but now I see. This is about a God. God's not stingy. God's extravagant. And whatever you need, whatever you can't see, He's going to let you see it. Whatever you can't touch, He's going to let you touch it. If you had no hope, if, He had no sight, but if you, if you have no hope for your family, He'll give you hope. If you have no hope for your finances, he'll give you hope. If you have no hope for the health of a child, if the child's got some problem, hey, don't give up, don't give out, don't give in. Get with him. He's got another word to say to you. Don't live on yesterday's word or the problem coming from another teacher or preacher. Get along with God until where you can say, I know that what he said, it'll be just like he said it. The storm's still raging, but it's going to be just like he told me. I'm that important to him. He died for me, and he wants to know me. But what's he want to do for you? For out of his fullness, that's the one who walks on water. That's the one who speaks in storms or silence. That's the one who, before time existed, said, let there be. For out of his fullness, the superabundance of his grace and his truth, we have. See, this is an eyewitness. This is John writing this. This is a man like you and I. This is a man who said, I'm, I'm the one he loved. And he said, we, we, all of us, all have received grace upon grace, spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, favor upon favor and gift heaped upon gift and all he wants us to do is get with him like Adam got with him like Moses saw the fire on that bush and he he took time to be alone with God and he heard things he he never thought he would hear and he was commissioned to do things he never thought he would do how much time do I have okay And that's what this church has been doing. I want to encourage you. Adam did not know the greatness that was in him and what would be produced through him. Moses did not know it, but God showed him. The blind man didn't know he could ever see. You, because of your faithfulness to keep these doors open, you, because of your prayers to make sure the fire is here, are making a difference in this area that you cannot dream of. And it'll only be shown you when you step out of time into eternity. So I congratulate this great church for what you're doing. You are welcome, well-deserved. There's a friend of mine in Romania, Pastor John Caba, and his daughter 
One of his daughters, Corina, I'll share tonight about. But I want to mention him to you because he loved the church like you do and like we want to grow in our love for the church. He was a pastor during the communist years in Romania. And he would have secret meetings in Romania, Oradia, Romania, the villages around Oradia. And he would always get arrested for preaching. And like Pastor Jerry said, I can't remember, he very eloquently was saying, you can get me out of church, but you can't get the church out of me. He loves the church, and I'm sure you do too. And my friend, who's about 10 years older than me, he kept getting arrested, and he kept getting brutalized and beaten, imprisoned. And then they, they let him out. And one day, some of the military stopped him and said, Cabo, we're going to arrest you again. They said, Pastor Cabo, why do you keep having illegal meetings? Why do you keep having prayer meetings? And why do you keep preaching Jesus? Why do you keep doing that? Because you know we're going to arrest you. And you know we're going to imprison you. And you know we're going to beat you. His answer, I've never forgotten. It's been a, a fire within me of inspiration and instruction. He told them, because it is my pleasure. It's the joy of my life. We love him because he first loved us. And he's loved us continually, hasn't he? And when someone loves you continually, they win your attention and they win your affection. And when they have walked with you through the most difficult, difficult times of life, and they've helped you when you felt helpless, and gave you hope when you didn't have hope, and loved you when almost nobody else loved you, that runs deep into you. And you love them because they first loved you. And it's a love that's valued and treasured. That's how Jesus loves us. And that's how he loves the local church. Out of his side came the church. And when John on the Isle of Patmos had a revelation, and God showed him things to come, and showed him of an antichrist and years of tribulation, and, and showed him how much trouble the final church on the earth would have and showed them the Antichrist and the two witnesses. That was after Jesus first. What's the most important thing on the mind of Jesus when he's talking from a resurrection position and he's talking to one of his apostles who have been exiled on the isle? They couldn't kill him. They couldn't kill John, tried to kill him, and Jesus said, it's not his time. Nobody dies until it's your time. Jesus talked to John about churches. What's on the mind and heart of the Lord? Churches. He died for the church. And he's inviting us. He's inviting us. Now, for this church, I really wanted this text as I wrap up my thoughts for this morning. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. For this church, I believe you'd recognize it. I believe you'd say amen. This, this is what we want to do. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor, those who are without. He has sent me to announce release and pardon and forgiveness to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, those who can't see what they need to see and to set free those who are oppressed, downtrodden, bruised, crushed by tragedy. Yeah. That's the work of the local church. We're the only entity on the earth that can get inside of people and start the healing from the inside. Everything secular starts on the outside and tries to get in but can't. This is the place where those who've been beaten and abused can find freedom and hope. Doors that have been locked open up. Words that you could never say that when you trust Jesus and the Spirit comes in, you can say things like goodness and kindness and gentleness. You can be patient because he, he works in us to will and to do 
of his good pleasure. I'm trying to say we've got a great Savior. Yes. We've got a great church that we're a part of. Yes. And it's worth our best. It's worth our finest. Amen. If I could, in conclusion, if I could show you a picture, but I can't because I understand this would be on the Internet, I'd show you a picture of a, a car full of uh, children, pretty uh, handsome uh, children. There'd be a young boy, 15 years old, very handsome. There'd be a uh, 10-year-old boy behind him, very cute. There'd be two girls, uh, very adorable. And uh, you'd say, boy, what a car full of happiness. <laughs> if I could and I won't, tell you what the 15-year-old boy and the 10-year-old boy had been subjected to by a demon-possessed dad, how he had been brutalized, and the things I was going to say, and I preach this at my church, share the testimony, that if I told you what those children had to see their dad do, uh, you would say no children should ever have to see that. But I changed my note, and I said no adult should ever see.
Jake, we've ate good barbecue, sir. Me and you, we've gone. Pastor Joe's ate good barbecue. Brother, this surpassed it. Oh, no. It's a, it was a secret. You'll get it tonight. I, I sliced it with my knife like butter. And I, he ate something, I ate something. And we just sat there and stared at each other. I've lost 25 pounds since the beginning of summer. I ate a piece of that brisket with the fat on it and melted. I was high as a kite. I was buzzing, man. It was good stuff. I'm giving you time to make your offer. That's the only reason I'm talking right now. Okay, everybody got your check? Yeah, you done with that? Let me mention a few things to you. Keith, we're going to take a motorcycle ride. It's coming up here November the uh, se uh, 2nd through the 3rd. It should be up there on the overhead. You'll see it. If you want to ride with us, we're going to ride up to Canton. We're going to throw some of you out to go and, and shop, and then some of us are going to take a bike ride. Uh, so if you'd like to, please, there's details back there on the table. There's also CDs back there of uh, or whatever, that Brother David, uh, music, if you'd like some of that. And that first song he did was fantastic. I never heard that song. It's beautiful. So connect with that. Please, if you'd like to ride with us, I want to ride. I got to ride. I got to get on my scooter. I'm just fed, been fed up with the hot weather. It's time to ride. So I just want to mention that to you. There's a few other announcements you're going to see on the overhead. Uh, Pastor Joseph, y'all going to play uh, volleyball after church and second service. Any of the teenagers would like to come out? So please come out and join us. Uh, if you want to hear the rest of this message, I know you got a lot more. Hey, double dip, double dip. Come on out to the second service. We'll all double dip together. Amen. As we give today, we believe in God for more money. Benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor, and roll tide roll. <laughs> I mean, uh, success to the kingdom, my bad. <laughs> what do you say, Z, huh? Come on, man. Y'all stand with me.